Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Friday, September 20th, 1 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. The big story, the GFS models. I've been up for the refresh at midnight because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I couldn't believe my own eyes. The totals in Montana are tremendous. In some regions, we're looking at up to six feet of snow coming in the first week of fall. What does, does that bode well for winter? We have heavy snow coming all the way down into uh, southern Montana and into northern Wyoming at the same time frame. Take a look at these totals. Take a look at the system that's going to come through here. Whew. Starting on the 25th, every day, it does, it's relentless. The 25th through the October 1st, it's going to be a very eye-opening for the masses. And if you stick with us through the end of this video, you're going to see that there have been some major shifts in the paradigm that you're living. Greta Thunberg is no longer a hero, according to the IPCC and NOAA. We'll get to that. Keep calm. It's boom time. Hurricane Jerry is looming on Bermuda. And if you guys did not catch... The waning gibbous moonrise tonight. It's happening right now. Quick, run outside if you're in the U.S. It's coming up in the east, due east. It's amazing. Worse than Hurricane Harvey, at least two dead as Imelda overwhelms Texas with incredibly dangerous flooding. Uh, yesterday we reported on 10 inches had fallen over 42 inches now on the ground in some regions. First responders had been overwhelmed by 911 calls. For high water rescues Thursday as Tropical Depression Imelda drenches East Texas, which is the nexus of the plexus of the Schmexus. I Good evening it. and thank you so much for joining us. Six million people are in the path of a deadly and catastrophic storm tonight. Thirteen counties in southeast Texas are officially disaster zones. A storm that exploded ashore more than 48 hours ago has dumped more than 40 inches of rain in some areas and up to a foot more could fall tonight. Imelda has also unleashed tornadoes and half a million lightning strikes. Imagine that, and one killed a man. As buckets of rain poured down today, more than a thousand people were rescued from flooded homes and roads. Hundreds more are still stranded, including one of our news crews. Our reporters are in the field tonight, included, including Janet Shamlian, who is trapped by floodwaters in Beaumont, Texas. Janet? Nora, heavy rain was predicted, but few expected what happened here today. Floodwaters pouring into homes, people begging for help, and entire neighborhoods and parts of the city cut off, including where we are now. Beaumont is a city submerged tonight after a steady, relentless drenching, more than three feet of rain in just 24 hours. The heaviest hitting overnight. The fact that there's cars stranded and people are getting high water rescued, that's never happened in our time that we've lived here, even after Harvey. Our team was trapped too. The water shows no sign of receding because the rain is still falling. In fact, the floodwaters here are rising. The storm closed Interstate 10. Drivers stranded on the highway for more than nine hours. This Coast Guard chopper flying in to rescue someone with a heart issue. Let's go, guys. We gotta go. The life-threatening flooding overwhelming first responders. Oh, look, there's a child back there. In the bone. Doesn't look like a good condition, and more rain is on the way tonight as I'm speaking. Six million people are in the path of tropical depression in Melda, a deadly and catastrophic storm. Thirteen counties in southeast Texas are officially disaster zones. The storm exploded offshore and dumped more than 40 inches of rain in some areas, and they are still rising. Up to a foot or more could fall Thursday night, which is right now. So we're going to be looking at those totals tomorrow. Let's talk about Hurricane Jerry. We predicted this uh, days ago to become a hurricane early. 
and turn up and head towards Bermuda. And now the current path from NOAA exactly is going straight across Bermuda. So that's a heads up. That will be Tuesday morning. Midnight. There it is. Take a look. Um, nothing else to say. We're going to be watching it closely. Late summer snow coats mountains in Elko, Nevada. Now, guys, these are not repeats of last night's reports. This is uh, from yesterday, reporting on today. Elko, Nevada getting the storm that we reported on yesterday. More rain and mountain snow predicted in Montana. Yes, it's true. Cool, wet weather will continue. And those models that we showed you at the beginning of this show, ho, ho, ho. Mammoth gets its first snow of the season after a very short summer. They just shut down June 28th. And they're about to reopen one of the shortest summers in history at Mammoth. Must be all that global warming. Oh, by the way, global warming is dead as of tonight. Weather radar picks up gigantic swarm of dragonflies over parts of the southeast U.S. I can't even believe what in the last few days what other channels were saying this was definitely harp and other geoengineering and other shit but a bit of a radar conundrum there was no rain but it appears to be a gigantic swarm of dragonflies the agency's wakefield office caught the large blob extending from virginia to north carolina on its radar earlier in the week which could have been a tweak but I'm a geek and I gave you the facts. Large hail, strong winds cause damage in the area. Yeah, Nebraska. So as the crops are finishing and the FDA is faking their numbers, hail continues to destroy more crops. And the cool summer. What a bummer for global warming. Hail also tempers the beet harvest. Yeah, who wanted the sugar beet sugar anyway? Look at this guy running next to a pile of steaming sugar beets. That is fucking weird. Holy macaroni. I need to smoke a bully. GFS models showing <laughs> amazing, amazing precipitation in the form of snow coming through your October 6th. But that's not the majority of it. It's right here. Boom. We hit the vernal equinox and it's like... Chicka, chicka, chicka. Boom, boom, chicka, boom, boom. It's like a conveyor belt of global warming goodness. Over, I mean, this is five feet here, but it's much deeper in all this region. This is a hundred square miles of five feet. Somewhere it's going to be seven feet. By October 1st, seven feet of snow in Montana. I hope you're not waiting for your crops to finish there. Gene-edited animals will intensify factory farming and the climate crisis and could harm human health. Do you think a genetically modified animal that you eat could harm you? <laughs> Come on. They said it was safe. Seismic update. The 6.2 in Indonesia was followed by a 6.0 and a 5.7. We predicted last night this region was on high alert, and boom, boomity boom. That's the trifecta box right there. I hope we boxed it. Whew. I want the payout. Dukono Volcanic Ash Advisory, Worldwide Volcano News Update. Let's go back. Wait, there's something I wanted to show you real quick. There was an interesting quake popping off in Utah. There she blows. I'm sure many people are reporting on this as uh, Yellowstone erupting. This is minor 2.6 in Utah. But I digress. Worldwide Volcano News Update, Ducono, 7,000. And we have a cacophony of eruptions as the KP near zero. Those cosmic rays will heat the muons in the subsurface in that silicious rich magma causing boom time. Chivalouche. Puffing now to 20,000 feet. Let's break it down. Four days ago, 12,000 feet. Three days ago, 14,000 feet. Two days ago, 16,000 feet. One day ago, 18,000 feet. Today, 20,000 feet. You picking it up? Shivalush is going to put it down. 
Here we are, Kvert. Let's refresh the image. There's a puff coming out of the top of that baby. That is a white plume of doom. We're going to refresh this live. It should be getting dark there any moment. I bet you this one's dark. Sun is setting over Shivaloosh erupting. Hello. That's the live stream. That is the live pick. And it is booming again after the 20,000 foot boom. We've got another boom. Live. That's a live boom. Keep calm. That's what we do here. We give you live booms from Shivaloosh. Not only that, Sab and Kaya puffing to 25,000 feet. This has gone three days ago from 22 to 23 to 25. Nevados de Chilon. Popo to 23,000 feet. Again, 20. It was 19, 20, 21. Now 23 at Popo. <whistles> Reventador, 19,000. Up, up, and away. There is an uptick as of today. NASA email reveals agency surprise at asteroids near miss of Earth. Have you guys heard of this? This is crazy. The asteroid called 2019 OK, which is not OK. Holy hey. Can you see the Oppenheimer sign? It's back there. It's over here. Not wherever the fuck it is. <clears throat> the asteroid called 2019 OK passed about 40,400 miles above Earth's surface just days ago. Five times closer to Earth than the moon, which is a micro moon right now, by the way. And it passed by at 55,000 miles per hour. Hours of power. Could have created localized devastation to an area roughly 50 miles across. Manhattan would have been gone if it struck land. The entire state of Rhode Island. Now, the big picture is the near miss of the incoming asteroid points to a long-running fight between NASA and Congress to build a reliable way to watch for potentially hazardous asteroids, which we don't have the funding for. It's being cut every day. Now, the president's NASA budget slashes programs and cancels rocket upgrades. Certainly doesn't include asteroid warning programs. That's all going to war so we can blow the fuck up out of other countries that pose no threat to us ever. Did you know that all of the trillions of dollars spent to bomb countries that the humans that exist there can never even get here? They don't even have enough money to fly on a plane, the majority of them. And any of them that actually get here are funded by the U.S. to blow up the World Trade Center and other shit. Paid, by, by, paid for by your tax dollars. <laughs> you dumb fucking... Ah. And, and now there are three billion fewer birds. We already covered the insect apocalypse. Now, the insect apocalypse... And the bird apocalypse has nothing to do with climate change. You know what it has to do with? Multinational corporations, the deforestation of the planet, and you living in your suburbs, you can prick. This is your fault. The death of the birds is because you have 13 cats, you can cat lady. The proliferation of aged women in Arizona with dozens of cats is causing almost 40% of this extinction event. But I digress. Did you see him at the fall harvest? Pickling. Check this out. Wow. I was going to do... <laughs> Look at that patty pan. I was going to do a pickling video, but in order to do a pickling video, you need to get some squash. So we'll come out here and we'll harvest some squash for you. Uh, we did have a freeze seven days ago here. But <laughs> Look at that patty pan. I was going to do a pickling video, but in order to do a pickling video, you need to... It's a hell of a patty pan. It's well so worth we'll come it. Out here if you haven't we'll seen the video, please watch it. Nobody hates it yet. Al Gore apparently hasn't watched the video yet. I want to thank each and every one of you that is a supporter of Matt Powers and our channel that got involved in the 
Permaculture Soil Science and Solutions Kickstarter. I just kicked in another 777 moments ago to bring him, look at that, $309 away from his goal to fund his new book and his new coursework. This is awesome. And that's just like $35,000 away from the stretch goal. So anyone with 35K that want to see Matt Powers and I throw in a garden somewhere and meet the stretch goal, stretch it out. I, I just posted a comment. It says, what a joy it is to support such a great talent in the world wide web of soil. Give deep and learn lifelong lessons of abundance and soil health. I can't say enough about Matt Powers and how awesome he is. Um, and nor about this video that Top Knot sent me just a moment ago. After School has some pretty, pretty good content, but just check out this few seconds right here with me. To reconnections in every aspect of your life. The information in this video comes from Michael Poland's Time We Reconsider That Relationship. Get as close to the source of where your food comes from. If you have space, plant a garden. It is time to reconnect with the source that nourishes us. You will find that this connection will lead to reconnections in every aspect of your life and sharing it. Now the average person spends only an hour per day interacting with food. We want instant gratification with food and with everything today. We want our nutrition now. We want our meals instant, the faster the better, but it's time we reconsider that relationship. Get as close to the source of where your food comes from. If you have space, plant a garden. It is time to reconnect with the source that nourishes us. You will find that this connection will lead to reconnections in every aspect of your life. The information in this video comes from Michael Pollan's book, in defense of food, which brilliantly... It doesn't brilliantly do anything except give Michael Pollan more money, who's not really a warrior for your health. He's more of a blend of multinational schmuck schmuck, and concern from the left. So be careful about buying Michael Pollan's books with that information at hand. Now... Matt Powers, on the other hand, he's a badass. So, but watch the full video. Why you can't trust nutrition, science, and health. I mean, they talk about, here, let's just watch a little snippet here. Have its intentions rooted in the right place, but ultimately it has been manipulated to serve the capitalist profit machine, not our health. Nutrition fads, health claims, and diet plans have fueled the food industry into a $9 trillion glutton. The bottom line is the Western diet is not good for health. If this wasn't already obvious enough, we have startling proof of just how unhealthy the Western diet is when it gets introduced to an isolated population like the aboriginals, who for thousands of years lived on animals they hunted and plants they could gather. Once the Western diet was introduced to them, the rates of obesity, heart disease, addiction, and diabetes skyrocketed. When aboriginals get off the Western diet and go back to their traditional ways of eating, they lose weight, lower their blood pressure, lower cholesterol, and dramatically improve their health in all areas. We should ask ourselves, how different are we from aboriginals? What's even more concerning is the conflicting alliance between the healthcare system and the corporations that produce our food. The unhealthy addictive food that is force fed to the masses ensures that there is a steady flow of paying customers for hospitals and drug companies. In 2016, Bayer Pharma acquired Monsanto, the world's largest food agriculture company, for $63 billion. This merger put Bayer in control of one quarter of the world's food supply. Why would a pharmaceutical company want to control the food supply? This is just one example of how the large corporations don't have your best interests at heart. They only care about profit. 
Holy macaroni, I gotta watch this whole video. I mean, this is like some of the best shit I've ever seen. Give him a thumbs up. Comment below that Diamond sent you here at after school. Because he's no fool. He's the bee's knees. <clears throat> now, something else you want to be cognizant of is public schooling and the fixation of belief and social control. Now, this whole idea of fixation of belief is something that I think that you need to delve a little deeper into. So here's a little snippet to get you riled up about this topic. Keep the student confined to a narrow horizon, or in the words of Mencken, to use compulsory schooling to breed and train a standardized citizenry, to put down dissent and originality, was the goal of many of the most influential educational reformers. To understand just how efficient the factory model of schooling was, and continues to be, at achieving this goal on a mass scale, we can turn to an interesting essay titled The Fixation of Belief, by the prominent 20th century philosopher Charles Sanders Peirce. In the essay, Peirce explained how it was possible to fix belief, not in the individual, but in the community, via what he called the method of authority. Let the will of the state act, then, instead of that of the individual. Let an institution be created which shall have for its object to keep correct doctrines before the attention of the people, to reiterate them perpetually, and to teach them to the young, having at the same time power to prevent contrary doctrines from being taught, advocated, or expressed. Let all possible causes of a change of mind be removed from men's apprehensions. Let them be kept ignorant, lest they should learn of some reasons to think otherwise than they do. Let their passions be enlisted, so that they may regard private and unusual opinions with hatred and horror. One would be hard-pressed to think of a better system for fixing belief for the purpose of breeding and training a standardized citizenry than the factory model schooling system in existence in the West since the late 19th century. As Ivan Illich wrote in his book, Deschooling Society, School is the advertising agency which makes you believe that you need the society as it is. It is not surprising that a study of 400 eminent 20th century men and women, detailed in the book Cradles of Eminence, found that three out of every five of them had serious school problems. Those individuals who yearn to push boundaries, explore and create ideas, invent and innovate, will not easily bend to a system which attempts well, well, well. Truth be told, I didn't bend. I got suspended time and time again. I stole uranium. If you didn't see that story, it's below. I, I published it a few weeks ago. I told the story at a first-person arts story slam in Philadelphia. And if you want to watch it, it, I may even link it for you in the description box. But check out Public Schools, The Fixation of Belief. It's a 12-minute video. Give them a thumbs up. Tell them Diamond sent you from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. So they get to know us. They get to know the people that are uh, promoting their facts, the truth, because that's why we're here. Now, breaking climate news. On the eve of the largest climate event ever with Greta Thunberg seizing the moment and um, – your ass about to be taxed beyond belief. There has been a ripple across the universe in the climate propaganda mechanism. And we reported on this about, I guess, 10 days ago, uh, maybe a week ago, where the head of the World Meteorological Organization talked down to global warming alarmists to all climate change alarmists in general, including Greta Thunberg and others. AOC is not out of it and other politicians, they're all schmucks, fear mongers about false information. And the fact is that the powers that be now know and are starting to glean the science from all alternative sources, like the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, ADAPT 2030, Ice Age Farmer, and even Ben Davidson, regardless of how big his head actually is. This is his video that he published tonight, which is awesome until the last 10 minutes.
The United Nations stunned the climate world this week. To be more specific, the Secretary General of their World Meteorological Organization, which created the International Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, came down hard on the discourse from climate extremists. The move comes amid escalating discourse from activists and politicians worldwide, and it comes as a tremendous moral blow to the major climate strikes and other demonstrations set to occur in the coming days. As is being reported around the world, it is a devastating blow to the core of rhetoric that has been more commonly crossing the line into bullying or worse. First, the major statement is made that global warming is not the end of the world. Yes, things are becoming more challenging, but the discourse from climate extremists is more resembling religious extremism than scientific discourse of any accuracy, and in many cases, it's bordering on terroristic rhetoric. They now implore the public to ignore these radical appeals to your humanity, as they are based in a false reality. Don't just go along with the popular thing. The thing is, this is really nothing new in climate discourse, the extremism. So why are they mentioning it now? Why do it when it will hurt the most? And as many of the best written articles on this have already pointed out, the IPCC essentially invented climate extremism. This is now like daddy coming in and saying, don't listen to this thing I made. It would especially make sense because right now these scientists are currently inserting solar particle forcing into climate models for the first time ever, a brand new thing at the IPCC. Given the next expected release date of 2022, the modelers must already be recognizing the effect of not ignoring 140 years of solar flares, coronal mass ejections, and cosmic rays. All of this appeared in our climate forcing movie last month, and apart from the only dissent coming in the form of peripheral and baseless character attacks, sprinkled with people who clearly didn't even watch the video before commenting, there is one question sticking out. It was asked of me by a prominent Penn State professor by email, who managed to find out how many other professors and NASA scientists were on board with this side of the story, and struggled to reconcile what was happening behind the scenes. It's the same thing in plasma cosmology that allowed Dr. Peratt to deliver never-before-heard descriptions of conclusions from classified nuclear tests. Think we just did that on a whim? There is a reason our young Ferris Walt won the National Science Championship, why a third edition of our textbook has been requested, and why this is where professors, NASA scientists, and more come to observe the real frontier. The UN has now